dear students good morning to one and all dear students in the last part of the video we have discussed about the some basic terms in the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy we have also discussed about some concept related with the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy particularly we discussed about the different rules which are used to determine the spin of a given nuclei in terms of spin quantum number which is a basic required condition for the molecules or for the nuclei to show the nmr spectroscopy dear friends in the last part of the video we have gone through a various concept like we have discussed about the motion of precessing nuclei dear friends today in this part of the video we are going to talk about the relaxation process shown by means of an uh, spinning nuclei how it transfer its excess energy in the surrounding that process is known as the relaxation process so this relaxation process is very important which is also called as the nuclear relaxation process in the field of nmr spectroscopy so this is simply the mechanism by which nuclear in the higher energy state means the excited nucleus transfer its excess energy to its surrounding and then it return to its ground state or the lower energy state and this process is known as the relaxation process and there are different ways by which it transfer or it lose its energy in the surrounding and the first method or the mechanism by which it lose the energy is known as the spin spin relaxation process so when in this process or in this mechanism the two precessing nuclei come close to one another and the nucleus in the higher energy state means the excited state nucleus transfer its excess energy in the neighboring nuclei and this mutual excess of excess of spin give rise to spin spin relaxation so this is very important uh, method or the mechanism by which the energy of one excited state nuclei transfer to the others precessing nuclei in the spinning state and it results into the broadening of the line in the spectra because the width of the spectral line is inversely proportional to the average time of nucleus spent in the excited state the second mechanism by which it transfers its energy in the surrounding is known as the spin lattice relaxation in this nucleus in the higher energy state means the excited state nucleus transfer its energy to the other nuclei in its surrounding framework in its environment or which is also called lattice and this is responsible to return the nucleus in the lower energy state and the time taken for this transition is called like the spin lattice relaxation time spin lattice relaxation time and this process is responsible to maintain the more nuclei in the lower energy state than in higher energy state and this is the uh, required condition for the nmr spectra dear friends again the question arises which nuclei show the nmr spectra and the basic condition for the any nuclei to show the nmr spectra is that the nucleus must have the spin quantum number greater than 0 so i should be greater than 0 spin quantum number should be greater than 0 and the nmr spectra involving the protons are going to that we are going to be considered here so we will talk about the nmr spectra of the proton here and the spectra of nm uh, the that nmr spectra of other nuclei are also observed to be similar to that of the proton and that's why the nmr spectra of proton are also called as the proton magnetic resonance spectra or simply it is known as the pmr spectra in the nmr spectroscopy there are different ways which are responsible to observe or which are responsible to appear the peak of particular proton in the molecular framework and that effect that mechanisms are called as like the shielding and the deshielding of that proton actually 
the isolated proton comes to resonance at a definite frequency at a fixed frequency at a particular frequency and if the given sample contains the number of protons which have the same environment actually which may or may not have the same environment that depends upon the structure of the that particular molecule but if all the protons in the molecule have the same environment then the protons will resonance will resonate at the same frequency and definitely it will give rise to a single peak so the number of peaks indicates the different types of the proton or the types of the proton which are present in the molecule and this if the protons if all the protons are having the same environment it means that these are chemically and magnetically equal or the identical then this type of the molecule will give a single peak in the nmr spectra and this happens with the molecule known as the tetramethylsilane so in the tms tetramethylsilane all the protons are magnetically equivalent and hence it gives rise to a single peak so this is the structure of tetramethylsilane here all protons are, are attached to the definitely silicon with, through the carbon that's why this is the exactly identical uh, or that is nothing we can say that a uh, similar environment for all the protons tetramethylsilane so but this is not observed all the time in case of an all the molecules and in most of the molecules the protons have different environment and the protons therefore come to resonance at different frequencies or at different uh, applied value of magnetic field and this is because the electrons surrounding a proton or uh, this is because the proton is surrounded by means of an electrons and these electrons are responsible to generate an induced magnetic field and which is proportional but opposite in the direction of applied magnetic field so this induced magnetic field because of the protons because of the electrons surrounding the proton this is opposite or this is opposing the applied magnetic field and this phenomenon is known as or is called as the diamagnetic shielding and here it shields the nucleus to some extent from the effect of the applied magnetic field therefore the degree of electronic shielding of a proton depends on the electron density around that proton if the electron density around that proton is greater there will be the more shielding so here hence the electron density around the proton is higher then shielding will be greater therefore the effective magnetic field on proton can be expressed in terms of this equation that is h effective is equal to the difference between applied magnetic field and the industrial magnetic field and the strength of the industrial magnetic field depends upon the applied field and the shielding provided by the surrounding electrons so therefore the strength of the induced magnetic field delta into the strength of applied magnetic field so here this delta is called as the shielding constant and if we put this equation 2 in the equation 1 then we will get this equation that is effective magnetic field is equal to the applied magnetic field into 1 minus delta so proton with different environment will come to resonance at different applied field and here if the greater is the shielding of a proton less will be the effective field for a given applied field therefore here this resonance peak will appear at the lower value of field and here it can be explained with the help of example of the halogen you know very well this is the order of electronegativity of different halogens that fluorine is having the greatest electronegativity as compared to the chlorine bromine and the iodine therefore consequently shielding parameters will be in the order for the methyl halides that is so in this case so here this fluorine will attract more electron density towards itself from the cs3 group and therefore if we compare the fluorine and the iodine so iodine will have the lower less electronegativity therefore this, this shielding constant for the protons in methyl iodide will be greater than the protons in the methyl fluoride therefore methyl protons of cs3f will come to resonance at lower applied magnetic field than the protons of other methyl halides and this value at what value they will come to resonance this is given by the another 
well known term known as the chemical shift dear friends in the last part of the video we already discussed about too much regarding with the gyromagnetic ratio given by means of this gamma and this gyromagnetic equation for the gyromagnetic ratio gamma is given by the equation 2 pi mu divided by h0 h0 is the apparent magnetic field mu is the frequency and from this equation we can write the equation for this frequency gamma into strength of the apparent magnetic field divided by 2 pi so this difference between the resonance frequency of a given nucleus in different structural environment is term is known as the chemical shift and here it is defined in this way it is defined as the change in the position of resonance field from that of the some arbitrarily chosen standard or reference molecule and it is always denoted by the delta so the most commonly used reference molecule in the NMR spectra is known as tetramethylsilane with which the delta values of all remaining protons or the all other protons of the other molecules are compared and this tetramethylsilane having a protons which are magnetically equivalent and it, that's why it gives rise to sharp a single peak at the high applied magnetic field. So here, these protons in the trimethyl cylinder these are not shielded. You know, these are the highly deshielded, and that's why it gives to single peak at the high value of applied magnetic field beyond these protons in most organic compound. The chemical shift is quantitatively expressed that the applied magnetic field. Uh, magnetic field of reference divided by the magnetic field of sample divided by the applied magnetic field of reference into 10 to 6 ppm. It can be also expressed in, some, in terms of frequency that is the frequency for the sample minus frequency of the reference divided by frequency of reference into 10, into 10 to 6 ppm. And when tetramethylsilane is used as the reference, then the chemical shifts are termed as the tau or these are reported in terms of tau. And this is given by the equation tau is equal to 10 minus delta. And for the tetramethylsilane, the chemical shift is found to be zero because these are highly shielded protons. These are highly shielded protons. And therefore, tau for this will be 10. So this tetramethylsilane is convenient to use it as a reference. Why this is so? Because of the it it because it has some important characteristic or this important features first is that it has 12 equivalent protons and all the 12 protons of tetramethylsilane are having same environment and hence it gives a single intense peak in the NMR spectra again it has low boiling point 27 degrees celsius so it can be available in the liquid state at the room temperature so samples can be recovered by evaporation uh, of tetramethylsilane after the spectrum is recorded so definitely at the room temperature uh, its boiling point is 27 degrees so it will be easily evaporated so sample can be recovered very easily again it is non-reactive means it is chemically inert towards the other substance again it is miscible with almost almost all organic substances that's why it's very easy to prepare the sample and it does not take part in the intermolecular association with the sample with the other molecules of the sample Again, tetramethylsilane shows NMR signal at very high magnetic field as compared to the low other protons because protons in the CS3 of tetramethylsilane are highly shielded by their electrons from the external magnetic field and hence the signal for the TMS tetramethylsilane appears at the extreme right. It means a field of the spectrum having the delta value 0. So here the conclusion can be drawn here if greater is the shielding uh, sorry if greater is the deshielding of proton larger will be the value of delta it means that if greater is the deshielding larger will be the delta and if greater is the shielding smaller will be the delta so here this arrow indicates more deshielding means low field the high frequency delta value will be greater around 10 and this arrow indicates more there is more shielding means up field where proton appears at the low frequency and nearly delta value will be nearly equal to zero. So this is all about the chemical shift and the relaxation process of nucleus that we discussed in this part. Dear friends, in the next part of the video,
can get the uh, information of the about the structure of the molecule based upon the position of peaks given by the different protons of the molecules thank you thank you very much